Greetings from Tokyo. So, uh, I got a little job here, just a small thing. Got this uh, three pound sledgehammer here that I use for all kinds of stuff. Going on a job tomorrow and I realize the handle on this thing is, yeah, it's kind of baked. Kind of in bad shape. So I have a handle here that was from a, an old sledgehammer, I think, and it was kind of broken on the one end, so I cut it off and saved the handle because I think I could probably get two handles out of this. So I'm going to cut this to length and uh, fiddle faddle with it and make a new handle and take you along for the ride. Stay tuned. First thing I have to do is take the old handle off of the hammerhead. Just make sure you don't nick the uh, hammerhead with the saw. That would be a bad idea. So once you get the handle off, you got to get that chunk of wood out of the eye of the hammer. So I just grab a, a drill and drill a whole bunch of holes in it. I use a twist drill, of course, because you, know, you could hit the metal of the hammer head. You wouldn't want to use a wood drill. Just drill a bunch of holes. I like to do it from both sides, remove as much wood as I possibly can to make it easier to drive the piece out. So I grab this uh, brass uh, punch that I had, I thought it would be perfect, but as it turns out, the punch is actually thicker than the diameter of the hole in the hammerhead. So I grabbed the smaller punch and removed it. There you go, one hammerhead ready for a new handle. Three pound mini sledge, very useful tool. Here's the old sledgehammer handle that I'd been hanging on to, just for this kind of occasion. The end of it was a bit chipped, so I knocked the end of it off to give myself a fresh start. And it turns out that the uh, grain in this handle is running very well, like it runs along, this, along the length there, or along the diameter there, the thickest diameter, which is perfect grain orientation for what I need. So I just mark the handle to the length that I want, grab my trusty pull saw and slice that off. And once that's done, I put the hammerhead on top of the handle and kind of drew through the eye of the hammerhead to give me an, an idea of where it's going to be. Sorry the camera work there kind of sucked, but you get the idea. Then I measure or mark off the length where I think I'm going to have to remove a lot of material from. Then I spend some time removing a lot of material. Check many times to make sure that I'm not getting too small. Spoke shave is a good tool for this, but I also use this Shinto file, or I can't remember what they call it. But it works good too, it removes a lot of material quickly, and uh, it doesn't leave facets like this spoke shave does. But all in all, it takes time to remove all this material. How much you can really do. Again, checking, getting close. At this point, I take my hammer, other hammer, and just bang it on a bit to leave a witness mark on the wood so I can see where I gotta remove more material. Again, hit it on, check, hit it on, check. Just check for size. Here I'm using a dead bull mallet to put it on a little bit further. Of course, it's stuck, so I have to actually bang it off again. Okay. So, again, more material to remove. Finally got it down to the point where I could actually drive it most of the way on. And I just had the final shaping to do. I chamfered off the bottom of the handle, and this time I set it pretty much where it's going to end up living. Pretty pleased with that. Nice tight fit. Again, punching and using a punch to uh, knock the wooden handle out of the eye of the hammerhead again. Getting ready to uh, make a curve in the handle. But first, I just uh, use my random orbital and just sand off the old finish and make it look nice. Here I'm marking for 
the length of the kerf that I want to put in the handle using my rip saw here. I used a cross cut saw at first, but it was a bit thin of a kerf, so I used a rip saw to make a bit thicker kerf and it's going to work better. So now I got to make a wedge. I have a piece of oak in my scrap pile that I've been using for something else. Whacked off a piece that would be about the right thickness. And then I cut my wedge blank to the length that I thought that I needed. There's lots of ways to make wedges. You can make a jig on the table saw. I guess you could use a bandsaw, but for my purposes today, I just figured I'll just stick a bench dog, it's brass, in the workbench there and just use a chisel and make myself a wedge shaped piece of wood. Not really worried about hitting the bench dog, it's like I said, brass, it's not going to damage my chisel. Just doing a little tidying up here, make it all consistently the same width. And then I grab the uh, Shinto file thing again and just kind of smoothed it out. So now I'm going to hang the handle on the head of the hammer again for the last time. Make sure it drives on all the way nice and secure. But I got a little more sticking out there on the top than I really wanted, so grab the saw and just left about a quarter inch hanging out. I figured that would be better for driving the wedge. A little glue on the wedge to make sure it doesn't back out. And really I should have used a piece of wood on top of the wedge when I drove it in. Got a bit lazy and just used a hammer. Kind of a bad idea. The wedge cracked but it's okay. It, it went in solid enough. I'm not really worried about it. Wipe off the glue and Cut off the excess wedge. And I didn't have any of the, the metal wedges. Because I would like to put one in. You'll see I draw a line here showing where I would put the uh, metal wedge. I'll get some next time I'm at the hardware store. I'm sure they have them there. Yeah, a metal wedge across like that will just make everything that much more secure. Well, that's it. Turned out great. Loved it. Used it all day at the job site. Drove a bunch of steaks with it. Anyways, thanks for tuning in.